As a lifelong fan of skincare, I am its biggest cheerleader when it comes to the potential to transform and create a brand new complexion. However, there are things skincare cannot do. Despite clever marketing, amazing branding, and the testimonial of your favorite influencer. So today's video is really about going back to the kind of core principles of where skincare finishes in terms of its potential for benefits and looking at some of the areas where it simply cannot touch or impact on them so that you know that you're not wasting your hard earned cash on a pipe dream. Now, the first hard truth today is that nothing will tighten your skin when it comes to skincare. When you find yourself doing this in the mirror, thinking, oh gosh, if only I could just get that little bit of lift there, or you're looking at your eye area and you're thinking it's not quite as snappy as it used to be, it crumples underneath a little bit more, that is elastin at play, and that is most likely a consequence of UVA damage over years. And that is something that unfortunately skincare cannot yet address. So if you see the word Titan on the copy of a product, run. In a similar vein, if you see something promising to restore volume, avoid it like the plague as well. Volume is a consequence of structures that lie beneath the dermis. And that's about fat. That's about plumpness. Usually something that we notice going first in the mid face, but also we can start to lose fat around the eye area as well. And I think those are two areas that are really kind of in focus right now because loss of volume here leads to the nasal labial crease and also potentially uh, the presence of jowls. So again, this is an area that skincare cannot access. We would not want it to. It is not safe if you could put something on the surface and it could travel right through down below the dermis. That's the territory of the doctor's office for you. So that's time to think about dermal fillers or even fat transfer procedures that restore volume in the right compartment. Hard truth number three, your pores will not shrink. We can keep them perky by maintaining collagen stores with retinoids and sunscreen and avoiding them becoming larger by protecting them from UV damage with antioxidants. And we can keep them clear with ingredients like salicylic acid and retinoids. But the size of your pores is a function of how active your sebaceous glands are. And that is determined by your physiology and hormone levels. So without tinkering around with things internally, we aren't going to be able to alter the pore size externally. Hard truth number four is you cannot fix a problem with a cleanser. The caveat being, if your previous cleanser was causing you problems, then changing it will solve a problem, most often barrier dysfunction. But on the whole, if you have redness, pigmentation, acne, or are concerned about the signs of aging, do not look to your cleanser as a solution. Hard truth number five, at least is one you can control, Daily sunscreen is the most important step in your skincare routine, period. There is no other active worth building into your routine until you have daily sunscreen in there. It is the thing that will make the biggest difference to skin firmness, smoothness, texture, brightness over time. And I encourage you to embrace this first and foremost beyond all other skincare steps. Hard truth number six is that drinking water will not restore skin hydration. Essentially, drinking water is necessary, of course, for our general health, but in terms of trapping water in our skin, which is what we're trying to do, that is a consequence of how we treat the outermost layer in terms of avoiding harsh cleansers, moisturizing regularly with the right components of moisturizer, so looking at occlusives and barrier repair ingredients, and eating for a healthy skin barrier, and that means good fats. And the final hard truth is that no cream will eradicate stretch marks or cellulite. Think of stretch marks as a tear in the skin's elastic fibers deep in the dermis, and cellulite is essentially fatty tissue in the subcutaneous compartment that doesn't want to sit neatly within its fibrous frame. 
Neither is a process that's accessible easily to skincare. They simply don't penetrate deeply enough. Plus, both are so common that if a woman doesn't have one, she's likely to have the other. These are normal findings in healthy women. And I think there are things that we should learn to accept about ourselves. By all means, use fake tan, body brushing, and great skin hydrators to maintain the quality of our skin and to feel confident in our skin. But I think acceptance about these two different concerns is probably the best route. So I hope with this video, I've helped you appreciate the areas of skincare where we're just not there yet, no matter how much we want to believe the marketing hype. And to perhaps instead refocus that energy on the things that we can fix, on the things that we can improve, and the things that will ultimately be worth our time, investment, and make us feel better about ourselves. So let's continue to demand ingredients with an evidence base that supports their mode of action in products that truly deliver on the claims that they make. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Thank you for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed and hit the like button if you'd like to see more content like this. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.